Hey there guys, it's Metro and we are back with another tier list analyzing all the situations that we've seen develop over the last 12 weeks. That's usually about just under halfway through a season. Usually a season's about six months. Last season, season one was a little bit longer. So feasibly, this one's probably going to be a bit longer as well. But typically 12 weeks in, we've seen all the data and we want to have a look at it today because about 13 weeks ago, I made a video. I have all the info from that video here, okay? So I want to compare what was coming into the season and what the reality is. You might already notice a couple odd ones, but let's get right to it. So with 12 weeks, we have seen the uh, the full breakdown of fixes by now, and uh, I'm actually kind of shocked by what they have here. Um, so, and again, this is supposed to be based on like facts. It, it's very, very, very hard to believe some of these things are actually based on fact. Um, and I'm not able to look at the statistical analysis and, and, you know, credit proof it, but we'll have to assume that these people know what they're doing. So, um, yeah, the, the, the thing about the affixed tier list thing is that it's actually, I, I'd imagine it's very skewed by the fact that people keep getting stronger each week, okay? Because the the hardest thing to believe here is that Volcanic Raging Tyrannical is F tier. It doesn't even make sense. I mean, like, what are you talking about? That that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And the fact that, you know, these Sanguine Weeks and Necrotic Weeks, where's uh, the Bolstering Week? Bolstering Weeks, yeah, this is a Bolstering Week. It's like, that does not make any sense whatsoever. And I almost just want to immediately not even talk about this because whatever this is based on is just wrong. I mean, that's just, it's pretty obvious to me that the week we currently have is an extremely easy week, right? So to say that is actually the worst possible week, something is wrong with your statistical analysis. But regardless, um, they do say that uh, storming, busting, which was the week, um, you know, so I, I think like there's not been a lot of good fortified weeks is the real problem. And um, it doesn't really agree with that. It, it seems like this. I don't know. It's It's been a while since we had some of these weeks. So we'll see what they look like on the second playthrough. But it's been, uh, you know, almost universally easy to say that tyrannical weeks have been very easy. Um, you know, both volcanic weeks come on tyrannical weeks. And, uh, you know, volcanic any week that it appears surely becomes one of the best possible affixes. It's just really, I hate to say it, but probably should just be removed at this point. So um, if I was to rank them, I'd probably just have every fortified week, you know, maybe like that fortified raging week was ridiculous. So that would probably be the lowest possible one. Where, where do they actually have that one? Fortified. I don't actually see it. Um, but it's here somewhere, I'm sure. And it, in my opinion, it's, oh, this is it here. Fortified Raging Explosive as B tier. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, but, you know, I guess a lot of groups probably with bear tanks and stuff, like they didn't really have a lot of trouble with that. But that was without question. That, that was really like the only unfair week um, because you constantly had to deal with uh, raging on packs like that were already extremely dangerous. But I do also think that this week was relatively unfair too. Necrotic and Sanguine. I made a whole video about that if you guys haven't seen it, about why that's probably one of the most unique combos of things they've ever added in this game. So, uh, but yeah, I guess let's just move on from that. And I do, I do want to point out um, now, of course, this is with the old. I actually, is this the old affixes? Yeah, this might be the, yeah, this is the old affixes. So, yeah, not much to see there. So don't even worry about it. But anyway, let's move on to Dungeon E's tier list. Now, this is one of the most interesting ones uh, that's changed, and, and we'll get right to the comparisons here. So as you see, um, I think it's pretty obvious that Necrotic Wake is the best possible dungeon in the game, and, and I don't even think... I can't see how it's close. Like, honestly, if you didn't see the video I uh, published last week, uh, last Monday, actually, I uh, we upgraded a key with... I think it was 30 deaths, maybe even more than 30 deaths. Upgraded the key at a 21. Like it, it was a progression level key. We upgraded it with 30 deaths. Okay. Meanwhile, if you have more than three deaths on keys, people are trying to leave. You know what I'm saying? So 
that's kind of wild. That is just obviously not balanced. I don't understand how it's gotten to that point. Okay. But I think it's it's also important to look at what we had last season. Okay. So Necrotic Wake was still easy last season. It only got easier, but Plague Fall was the broken easy dungeon because of the um you know the, the whatever the, the mobs killing each other basically. Uh, and that you know, there's still a lot of tricks that you can do in Plague Fall, but now that it's a little bit more balanced, it does fall down a tier. And I'm actually surprised to see it at the A tier still, because I feel like it's one of the harder dungeons uh, for me. And of course, you know, like a lot of the people in this 16 to 29 bracket are not in this boat. But like, I just have a lot of people don't seem to have good uh, a good skill set for this dungeon. Like, you need the spells, you need a lot of kicks, and you need a Necrolord. And if you don't have like two out of those three things, you're going to be in a lot of trouble in this dungeon. It's actually not a slam dunk. Um, but if you have at least two out of those three things, this is a very, very easy dungeon. And yet again, another one where I've had multiple wipes and we still upgrade the key. That's kind of the whole um, the whole trend here. And, and, and Halls has become extremely easy. They added a minute to it. And honestly, it did feel like it needed it in the beginning of the season, but it definitely doesn't now. Like they should probably just take that minute away. And uh, Spires, I'm surprised to see Spires fall. So if you look over here, Spires has fallen all the way from fourth overall in A tier to fourth overall in C tier. I, don't, I still don't fully understand how these guys do their tiering system, but that tells me that Spires is significantly harder this season than last season. And again, that just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. <laughs> this, uh, this dungeon has gotten so much easier this season. It's actually kind of crazy. It has two almost ideal places to skip lieutenants. It is so much easier to combine trash now without the ever-looming presence of the prideful mob spawning. And uh, they nerfed the hardest boss in there by, um, like, I mean, it wasn't even close. It was clearly the hardest boss, and they gutted it. I mean, its main difficulty has effectively been removed. And people still die to it all the time, but... Uh, I don't know, man. That that one is crazy. So the 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 other really big one though is is mists, and I think this is again like this is not, in my opinion not accurate at all. To say that mists is is a better dungeon than any of these dungeons, it's hard. Again, very 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 hard to believe the stats support this. But more interesting, you know, you see mists is one of the higher tier keys, and if you look back to the previous tier list I made, mist was actually a top tier key. I think it was top three, if not top two. So it has fallen a lot since then, and I think this is because of how rigid the dungeon is. It's a very short dungeon in terms of actual like playthrough. You have very few options for a large portion of it, but it has gotten slightly easier in a few skips. And I said this a long time ago, and people are starting to get better at the dungeon. I knew it was going to happen eventually. Everybody was riding on a certain strategy from season one, and now that people have adapted to season two more, yeah, it's actually a not it's not that bad, but it's still a very tight dungeon. And if you don't have the skips or the uh, the strategies, you will struggle to upgrade this key as well. Uh, but D tier again, it's just see like I I would say this tier this is S tier alone, okay, alone, nothing even close. And I would. Like to have anything on A tier suggests that there's something close to, to S tier, and that's just not true. So I would then put like a bunch of other dungeons on B tier. I would put maybe maybe Plague Fall alone on A tier. But then I would have Halls B tier. I would certainly have Spires B tier. And I would absolutely have Sanguine Depths B tier. Sanguine Depths is one of the easiest dungeons in the game. And I, I don't know how people struggle with it, honestly. Because it's another one where I, I have a video of this as well. We wiped two times to the invis pot. Okay? We failed the invis pot twice and upgraded the key. Now, I don't remember what level that was. I think it was at the very beginning of the season, but it's like this timer is a joke. Legitimately, if you just go in a straight line and do not wipe, you double upgrade this key. It's it's a complete joke. I I, I don't know what's up with some of the timers in this this season, but they're just not balanced at all. Okay. Now, the weirdest thing about this is they actually move theater down. Like, theater goes down in this. So, <laughs> it's very hard to believe that at any point in this game, theater was a C-tier dungeon. But I do remember when the other side was, you know, a lot harder coming into Season 2. Uh, but I just 
it's been buffed. Um, the timer has been an extra minute added to theater. And I still can't see it in F tier. You know, it's just like very hard to believe. Like, I don't know, man, like the whole statistical correlation, I just can't wrap my head around. But if we're just looking at what is on the screen, to say the other side is hard, is the hardest dungeon in the game. I don't, I don't really know, man. It's, it's, I guess it just depends a lot on the weeks. And, you know, there's not really any good uh, last place, I think, for dungeons right now. And I think that's a good thing. I think that's a very good thing. I think that means that dungeons are relatively well balanced. So, okay, so let's talk about tanks now, okay? Um, so, uh, this is obviously the bread and butter we have, um, you know, our, our whole interest in the channel. It's not necessarily been something I've explored too much, but I hope to be getting back to my roots in the coming uh, in the next year or so of Shadowlands. Hopefully, we'll be playing more tanks, have a lot more time for alts, hopefully. But uh, uh, no surprise to anybody, Bear Tank is S tier. And I was actually surprised coming into the season that it was not uh, S tier as well. Okay, meaning top tier, whatever. Uh, it was still top two, but it was A tier. So the more surprising thing is that Vengeance is still A tier. And it's just hard to believe because if you look again, if you look at Raider IO, there's no Vengeance Demon Hunters out there doing anything crazy. So um, right now it seems like uh, as of this very moment, Prop Paladin is making a massive surge to the top. I don't understand what's happening there. Uh, but yeah, it's just basically one really skilled player. I'm not sure exactly why they're playing Prop. I don't really follow it. But um, now they are making a bunch of other medi like you know, medium level players think about Prop Paladin. So it's becoming quite flavor of the week kind of thing. Uh, and that is certainly, you know, maybe you see that in the ranking there being fourth overall, uh, because, you know, in my opinion, otherwise it's the worst tank. I would say it's definitely six overall. Uh, but Brewmaster below uh, Vengeance, again, is another one that I just can't, I just can't see. Uh, Brewmaster seems like comfortably the second best tank from what I've looked at. Uh, I haven't played it myself and I would like to play it. I think I will play some monks soon, but man, it's just really capable right now they do very over, like good overall damage they have you know a very balanced kit for what the game offers right now uh, and i guess maybe they still struggle with magic or something like that but very capable and, and then of course you know in the past we saw blood decay as last overall on a tier by itself there's no current c tier tank which i think is a good thing probably speaks a lot to blood decay's place but you know if it wasn't for the recent resurgence of prop pally I guess it's a good thing that Blood Decay is just not last overall, but it's very hard to believe that Blood Decay is not, uh, I'd say fourth for sure. Like I, I wouldn't even, I hate to say this, but I just don't think Vengeance is above any, like I'm not really seeing the purpose of Vengeance right now. They do insanely good offense still, but like again, so does Prop Pally. Brew's not far behind, Bear's not far behind. Haven't seen a lot of Warrior, but I'm sure that's probably not far behind either. The big outlier is Blood Decay. So when you have five good damage tanks, and you got to start looking at what else they bring. And uh, I don't really know what Vengeance brings right now outside of offense. So yeah, anyway, I think, you know, I do think Blood is incredibly sturdy. I, I'm going to say I've never felt stronger as a Blood Decay, even including Legion. Yes, including Legion. I've never felt more capable of surviving things right now. It actually feels very similar to kind of like probably like what would equi equivalent be the, the season three of Legion, not the end of Legion, but kind of right before ABT came out. I was doing a lot of soloing. I was having a lot of interesting times as Blood DK, doing a lot of solo saves, and I'm back to that level now. Now, a lot of that is because of things that aren't going to be in the game for very long, like the uh, gem that we have from uh, the current raid, um, like Sogodon's shield, um trinkets like things that are kind of not really permanent not really the class itself they impact blood decay substantially and i think blood decay is really benefiting right now from having a very high health pool thanks to veruth it it really really helps our damage as you see if you look at if i got veruth on the first pull of a dungeon which is nigh impossible but it does happen on some it's actually my top damage over the course of a key so yeah that's kind of cool uh, Stygian King Barb's obviously helping Blood DK quite a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm almost kind of shocked to see Prot Warrior in the position it is. I just think a lot of people aren't playing Prot Warrior. So uh, for me, I would definitely have Bear, uh, again, on its own, not even close. 
I would probably have Brewmaster on its own, not even close. I understand why Prop Pally would be ahead of Blood. So I might do that too. I might have B tier with Prop Pally, Blood DK, and maybe then Vengeance, and then Prop Warrior. I probably, yeah, I don't think there's any tank that's C tier right now. But I do think Brewmaster is just a step ahead of other tanks. And I've seen some really cool stuff from Brewmaster. So we might be taking a look at that in the future. Uh, but anyway, next up, we're going to take a look at the healer tier list, because this is always interesting to me. Um, I'm kind of shocked, you know, to see what it is, because um, I'm not really sure what Paladin is is doing right now that's making them so good. But, uh, you know, Paladin was an absolute stud in Season 1. They came out of nowhere. Everybody was playing Resto Shaman, even at the top level. And all of a sudden, Paladin come rising through the ranks. And I was really pleased to see that. But then they nerfed the hell out of their mana, they nerfed the hell out of their damage, and they also nerfed Ashen Hollow. All the things that were powerful in Season 1 got nerfed, but they're still doing really good damage. And I just think they're a much weaker version than they were in Season 1. In fact, I've pretty much stopped playing mine, and it's not necessarily because of that. But I'll tell you, it's a lot less fun when you can't play the playstyle you want to play without going constantly out of mana. So I think Resto Shaman is clearly tier one right now. Uh, maybe not number one overall, but without question, they're tier one because they do everything better than they did in season one. They've gained so much strength with the Kyrian Legendary, with Mechanicos, and with the Vesper Totem. Everybody's playing that now. It's so much better than the Venthyr Covenant. I cannot believe how long people were in that Covenant, man. What a terrible pick. This is so freaking powerful. It is unbelievable. I'm seeing them do even more damage than Paladin. Like legitimately, if you see uh, the two head to head, I think Paladin is actually below Shaman. The problem is it's a different type of damage. And that might be what's dictating here. But I do think Paladin obviously way better priority damage, way better boss, single target damage, etc. Shaman is not good at that at all, but they are insane AoE. Like legitimately, I see Resto Shamans above DPS, and I'm not just talking about Balanced Druids and Fire Mages, like actually doing like 10, 12, 13k on AoE packs as a healer. That's just ridiculous, honestly, and there's no, like those two are, so right now it should not look like this at all. It should be um, tier one, maybe Paladin. I don't know. I, I still think Shaman, but I think Paladin and Shaman tier one, regardless of order. And then there should be nothing on tier A and nothing on tier B. And, and it's not even close. I'm telling you, it's not even close. The difference is amazing. It's unbelievable how much better those two healers are than the picks next to them. And to say discipline is, is, is underneath. It's like, what are you talking about? Now, discipline also does have some good upsides in season two. They have a similar situation with the Kyrian buff and, uh, you know, the situation they have with everything I just described. But Shaman also applies to Discipline. But their kit is just worse. Like, it's honestly just worse than Shaman. So, yeah, I could kind of see it being B tier. I very, very rarely see a good Discipline Priest. They still seem to have insanely bad mana issues. They still offer me, like, almost nothing from the healing perspective. I feel like they don't contribute anything to my success. Uh, and and I, don't, I don't feel like it helps. Uh, but... Um, I guess maybe I could see them being better than Holy Priest now, which, you know, with the last time we looked, Holy Priest was actually the better pick. And I still think it, it is, honestly. But um, yeah, I, get, I guess I get it. I'm actually sad to see Resto Druid not move at all because they're actually in the exact same spot they were in. And uh, I really want to see Resto Druid again, man. They were so fun to play with as a play DK in season uh, three and four of BFA. And even though they kind of really dominated the meta and it wasn't good for the other classes, um, it just it just goes really well with Blood DK. They offer a very good playstyle with Blood DK. Uh, and then Miss Weaver actually moves up one tier but stays last overall, which it's just hard to hard to disagree with. Somebody has to be last in healers. It's obviously Miss Weaver. So, uh, but they're not nearly as bad as they were, and I definitely agree that they should be moving up. So I think like mostly this is fine. But like I said, I think there should be a giant gap between these two. I don't think it's even close. I definitely don't think Discipline is 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 in the position that they're ranking them in. I would see them uh, maybe C tier, number one, like third overall, but two tiers lower, at least one tier lower than both of these for sure. So, uh, so next up, we have the Melee tier list, which is another interesting one. Um, and, uh, you know, we've seen some surprising things here with Melee. So we'll try to... 
try to look at it here. Um, we have Wind Walker coming out of, well, you know, relative nowhere. They were in a really good spot, looks like, going into the season. Um, but, yeah, I'm I'm shocked at what Wind Walker is doing. Let's put it this way. Again, it doesn't feel like it's any, anything even close. Wind Walker is, by and large, the best DPS in the whole game. Like, they, they don't even have a rival. They do more damage than every other spec in the game in, in five minutes. In single target, they're not excellent. But... In overall damage, they are going to be the top every single time. Like, frankly, if, you know, you have three equally skilled and geared players and the Windwalker isn't above the other two, then they're probably also Windwalkers. I mean, that's just the way I've seen it. So uh, it's shocking that that's the case, but it just seems to be absurd. They're never they're never not like this. It's the same thing happened in Legion. Uh, they went from being awful to the best. Like, there's no in between, it seems, because of the way their kit works and probably always will work. So... This is life if you're playing a monk, unfortunately. Uh, but it's a good time to play it, so enjoy it while it lasts. I don't know what it's going to look like in the future. Um, but uh, if you look at last, um, you know, when we came into this season, I still see a lot of the same things. So I still think, I, I mean, this whole subtlety and, and assassination thing, I don't, assassination's down here, I don't know. But I'm seeing a lot more rogues that aren't outlaw, and I don't really understand why, but I don't know a thing about rogue. Maybe somebody does. I don't know what subtlety is doing that's better than Rogue, uh, out, than better than Outlaw, but it doesn't really matter to me. I always rank things based on classes because, like, I don't know enough about the actual class specs themselves to be worried. But I do agree that they are definitely tier number, uh, you know, number two overall, regardless of what tier. And Demon Hunter is definitely number three. That's definitely my top three. I totally agree with this. Like, I think this is exactly what I'm seeing. And uh, Demon Hunter is in a really good place right now. So. But yeah, this is the th this is the thing that really just doesn't make sense to me. We talked about it a ton last season as well. Um, and uh, the weirdest thing is that Arms has moved all the way up from F tier. And I think, again, that's because of the Kyrian situation. It's almost like if Mechanicoaster coasters removed from the game, there'd be a lot of changes to this. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's no indication that that's happening. So enjoy it now, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, Arms and Fury equally um, neck and neck there. Uh, the, I'm just going to say this warrior is a do nothing pick for me. I never have success with warrior. Um, like they never do anything. They, they literally bring nothing. And, and there was a bunch of people trying to suggest that like the things they do bring are valuable. It's just false. Like, I, I mean, as a blood death knight. Okay. So you got to see it from my perspective. If you're playing a warrior, I mean, go, go do the best that you can, man. But I, I'm going to tell you why this is a do nothing pick for me. Um, so, so one, they bring a, like the best thing they probably bring is the actual, um, the buff, the, the warrior buff. Okay. That's probably the actual best thing they bring. And that's great. It used to be a scroll. Um, so I have it in my head that is now incorrect that they do, they barely bring any benefit because you can just use the scroll. The scroll's not in the game anymore. So yes, that is valuable. And that's kind of where it ends. They bring rallying cry, which is just not useful at all in five minutes. Like, honestly, I don't. It's very, very good in raids because there's a lot of mechanics that are actually going to challenge your health pool reliably and you know they're coming and you use it and it's easy, okay? This isn't the case in five minutes. This isn't that kind of content. Five minutes, you randomly get one shot or you die to a mistake that is not savable with, with Rallying Cry. Like, I, I don't know when the last time I've ever seen a case where Rallying Cry was good and honestly, like probably 50% of the time Rallying Cry gets used, it's to save the warrior's self. Like he doesn't even care about the group. He's using it because he's made a mistake and he needs to save himself. Like that's not a valuable CD. Like that's regardless of what the theoretical facts are in practice, it never gets used to any efficacy. So those are the best two things they bring. Everything else they bring is useless. Like I, I they bring a very mediocre slow, which like seven other classes bring, and I have zero use for as a blood decay because I have a 90% slow, which obviously decays. I have multiple slows, let's put it this way. So it brings nothing, zero value to me. Uh they bring uh, a single target stun. That's a talent. Okay. Again, like seven other classes bring stuns and like Many other classes bring AOE stuns. The fact that they still don't have Shockwave is shocking, honestly. And, I mean, what what other things are people even bringing up? I guess the whole taunt and die by the sword thing is kind of cool if you're playing ARMS. But, again, never going to happen in a pug. I mean, I, I've had people or intervene and die by the sword, I guess, is mostly what they do. But I, I've had people intervene and die. So, like, 
die by the sword? No, just die. <laughs> it doesn't really work out. Uh, but the biggest issue with Warrior is that they seem to have no control of their threat. The amount of times uh, somebody dies to threat in keys and it's something other than a warrior is very low. I mean, warrior is always an issue with threat. And, uh, you know, monk ironically doing probably twice the damage of warrior and they don't have threat issues. And I think that's because a lot of their damage comes from clones, which are not technically threat eligible targets. I'm not exactly sure why Windwalker doesn't pull threat every pack uh, because I've seen Windwalkers do like 100k DPS and not have threat issues. And then there's some dude doing like 60k and he's got threat. It doesn't make sense. I don't fully understand it. But I do think Warrior is without question. Warrior and Demon Hunter, to be fair, are both very bad with threat. Uh, but Warrior is number one because they just, uh, they're usually also going to beat me to packs because of charge and heroic leap. Um, so it's a difficult thing as a blood decay to keep up with some classes. And Warrior, you'd be surprised. You'd think Windwalker and Demon Hunter would be the ones. But Warriors are doing it so aggressively because it's a main part of their offense that they kind of put themselves in a position where they're just killing themselves. Like it happens so often they charge in blade storm and just die. Like they have threat on every mob and they die. And this happened at the very beginning of the season. Very funny uh, video warrior charges in dies to threat. And then a Ragnaros and an Azralon player start arguing with each other. It was, it was priceless. You should go watch that one. But everything else is like, almost like I just don't even see it. Like, it's just like, just get that off the screen. I mean like DK, it's sad to see DK. But like the rest just doesn't really matter to me. I'm surprised to see Enhance as low it is because I definitely think Enhance is just up there with Warrior. Like maybe they do less damage. I don't really know because you don't see a lot of Enhances. But they bring way more value than Warrior. Like 10 times more. Like it's not even fucking close. I can't even convey this to you. Enhance and even DK bring far more to keys than Warrior. So, so this is what I've always been saying about Warrior. Warrior has to be the top DPS because if it's not, it brings nothing else to the key, nothing that is valuable to me. I'm talking about my experience, okay? And it just doesn't. It's not the top DPS. It's not better than Demon Hunter, and it's certainly not even close to Windwalker. So, yeah, you guys can argue this all day, but I have not seen a single case where, uh, where that's not the case. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I do think like Enhance is better. I think, you know, I'm surprised DK is as low as it is, but it's just not really very good right now from what I've seen. And the thing I will point out is that I have not seen a single Retribution Paladin all season. There's one on the sheet, and that is a friend of the channel, Jambo. He played it for a key because we just wanted to play together. He's playing Ret to try it out. He did very well, but that's actually the only retribution paladin i have seen all season now to be fair i don't think i've seen a single feral druid either and if you know me that's a very good thing honestly is it anymore i don't know feral being last overall makes complete sense because balance druid still com continues to be king but balance it ain't what it used to was let's put it that way so anyway finally we have uh the last situation here we'll just do it like we did before and we have range dps so um, not saying I'm shocked at this, but I just don't really see how balance is still the top pick in the game. It just doesn't make sense to me. I never see them. It just, I just never see them do anything. Like, I guess a lot of really good balanced druids are out there and they just don't pug because every time I have a balanced druid, I mean, we've had some really bad ones like that, that dumbass who he got, the dude got feared twice and then leaves the key within a minute. So that's always in my head a little bit, but yeah, I mean, this is not not a pick that is a slam dunk anymore, unfortunately. They used to be way better, way more consistent damage. That doesn't seem to be the case anymore. Um, I just don't know how it's going to work out, like how they're number one. I, I can't see it. I don't mind seeing a Druid, especially on a Tyrannical Week, but Tier 1, number one, no way that has to go to Mage. And the problem is you have three Mage specs competing, right? So I think Frost is clearly number one overall. I don't think Fire is better than Arcane, but whatever. It just doesn't really matter to me. I just think if we're talking about classes, it's pretty clear that Mage is the number one class right now. It's never bad. I can't think of a single situation where it's not good. So yeah, um, that's that's not good. Uh, that doesn't make any sense to me, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, and then Ellie is very strong right now. So, you know, you see the same three in this position, but with Fire. Uh, and that was like, you know, coming off of season one. So fire was like just seeing the nerf. So people were still doing a lot of stuff with fire. Uh, but yeah, I would, I would say right now for me, it would be frost mage, then Ellie, then bombkin tier one. And that's print it. Don't worry about anything else. And I definitely think, uh, Hunter is, they're probably right behind Ellie. In my opinion, I would say mage 
uh, Druid, Ellie, and Hunter. Top four without any competition. Just forget everything else and move on. Uh, Marksman and both BM are good. So, But Warlock, I'm not seeing love for. Um, I don't really see the whole Affliction thing. I keep seeing, again, uh, probably a lot of Flavor of the Month people playing Affliction out of nowhere, and it's just not really working. Um, I see some cool AoE numbers, and then they do like 7k overall damage. So it's like, oh, well, that was useful. Um, it's kind of just like a worse Frost Mage or maybe even a worse Fire Mage at times because they do do insane numbers, but I don't fully understand where it's coming from because then they do insanely bad numbers on some packs. So not sure if it's good players or what, but... And Shadow Priest, I think, is just always going to be... You know, it's the worst class on the list, and that's exactly what I agree with. Like I said, if typically we rank them by classes, I would definitely have Shadow Priest last. Uh, but they are a lot better uh, than they have been in the past. Their single target is still very good, and um, you know they they have more value now with being able to mass the spell a lot of things. So anyway, let me know what you think. I think uh, especially tanking, you know, I'm not necessarily surprised by it, but I do think um, the tank situation is very good right now. Uh, I'm happy with how all everything is a little balanced, but I'm just surprised to see Vengeance. Also, you know, very surprised. This is just like, I'm so unbelievable of, like, I'm so skeptical of that it doesn't make any sense. And this is like, it's hard to believe some of these dungeons are where they are. But, you know, in terms of DPS, everything matches up to my, uh, my expectations. So that's it. We're halfway through season two, or what should be halfway, we're probably not halfway, but we're at least uh, probably at least a quarter or at least a third of the way through season two. Let's say that. So um, we'll probably come back to this as season three is on its way. Uh, but thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of comments about warriors, but we'll see you guys in the next one.